Hello again, English learners. I'm going to give you three sentences, and I want you to decide if there are any mistakes in any of these sentences, and if so, what the mistakes are. The context is, you have visited your friend's home, and she has a lot of people over for a dinner, and everyone always takes their shoes off when they visit. Then it's time to leave, and all the shoes have gotten mixed up. Okay. That's the context. Here are the sentences. Are there any mistakes in any of them? Whose shoes are these? Who's got my shoes? That guy who's got a big nose is wearing my shoes. Have a think. I'll pop my collar and then I'll tell you the answer straight after this. Let's go. Hello again. So let's find out how you did in our little quiz. Number one was incorrect. Number two was also incorrect, and number three also incorrect. If you got all of these correct, congratulations, good job. If you didn't, don't worry. This has a very clear rule, which I will explain for you right now. The mistake in all of these sentences is the incorrect use. Of whose and whose. These words are homophones. Homophones, words that are pronounced exactly the same but have a different spelling and meaning. Whose, with an apostrophe, is a contraction. A contraction. An apostrophe can be used for a contraction or to show possession, which is why people get confused with this. The apostrophe in whose. Is not showing possession. Whose is a contraction of who is or who has. On the other hand, whose, spelt W-H-O-S-E, is a possessive pronoun or determiner. It shows possession and must be followed by a noun. That's it. That's the rules. So the first sentence must be, whose shoes are these? We can't say who is shoes of these or who has shoes of these, so we definitely need whose to ask who possesses the shoes, who owns the shoes. The second sentence I gave has to be who's got my shoes, because we could say who has got my shoes. This is a contraction. And the last example: that guy who has got a big nose is wearing my shoes. So another contraction. We use whose. Don't be tricked. This is not showing possession. The possessive form w h o s e can only be followed by a noun. For example,、uh, you could have a sentence: That guy whose nose is so big is wearing my shoes. Now there is another way that we can use whose. The whose spelt w h o s e. And that is with inanimate objects, for nouns which are not people but things. And this is a slightly controversial topic in English, with different grammarians citing different sources. I chuck in with Fowler and Cambridge, and these hold that whose can indeed be used with inanimate objects, as English does not have a possessive form for which or that, and using of which can be. Unnecessarily cumbersome or clunky, so you can say sentences like this: "The car whose windscreen is cracked is his." You can see in this example, "whose" is being used to refer to an inanimate object, the car. This sounds quite formal, though. If this sounds a little strange to you or is too formal for the tone that you want to create, the other option is to rephrase the sentence without a possessive. The car with the cracked windscreen is his. This is what I do, albeit automatically,、uh, probably 99% of the time. So, that's about as deep as we need to go in today's lesson. You now know the rule. If you can replace the word with "who is" or "who has," then use "whose." If not, then we use "whose," spelt W-H-O-S-E, to show possession. Any questions? Just leave them in the comment section, and I'll see you in a few days for the next one. Cheers.